Hello and welcome to another episode of Relationship Alive. This is your host, Neil Satin. It's easy to talk about self-care, to pay lip service to it, but what does it really mean to take care of yourself? In today's episode, we're going to get back to basics to ensure that you're actually nourishing the most important person in your world, and that is you. Because if you're not nourishing you, then how are you possibly going to show up for the people around you in your world? It's not possible. Or how will you get to Relationship Alive live in Portland, Maine on October 12th? If you haven't heard, I'm going to be joined by John and Julie Gottman who are literally the world's most respected relationship experts for a conversation about, you guessed it, relationships. And we're going to have ample time for questions from people like you, well-nourished you, with all that self-care that we're going to talk about. So come join us on Saturday, October 12th, my last Relationship Alive. Some people actually flew out from Utah, so no matter where you are, There's really no excuse. Come to Portland, Maine, hang out for a night with me and the Gottmans. You can visit neilsatin.com slash live show for more information and to buy tickets. And okay, maybe you can't come all the way to Portland, Maine. I mean, I hope that you can, but if you can't, perhaps you're wondering how else you can get involved. Well, One simple way is to just show your support for Relationship Alive and our mission by donating whatever feels right to you, because it's your generosity that helps keep the home fires burning here at Relationship Alive headquarters. So if you are finding the show to be helpful for you or for people that you love, just visit neilsatin.com slash support or text the word support to the number 33444 to choose something that feels right for you. Every little bit counts. And this week, I'd like to thank Beatrice, Karina, David, Angie, Sylvia, Drew, and Lydia. Thank you all so much for your generous and in many cases ongoing support of Relationship Alive. If you're looking for some free guidance along with this podcast on how to have the most effective communication possible, then make sure you grab my top three relationship communication secrets. These three things will help you stay connected no matter how challenging the thing is that you're trying to talk about. Just visit neilsatin.com slash relate or text the word relate to the number 33444 to grab the free guide. And lastly, if you want to connect with other people for free who listen to the show in a safe space where you can get support for your relationship, Come join the Relationship Alive community on Facebook. Easy as that. Okay, let's get on to the basics of self-care. Now, before we dive in too far, I do want to let you know that there are a couple other episodes that I've done on the topic of self-care. Not at the level that we're going to talk about today, but these are a couple other good episodes about self-care. The first is episode 58 which was me talking about self-care as a crucial step. I guess way back in episode 58, it was uh, a, a, a realization that dawned on me or something like that. And then in episode 144, 12 squared, uh, we spoke with Cheryl Richardson about extreme self-care. So those are two other very powerful episodes for you to help fuel your quest for adequate self-care, which is so important. Uh, But I want to get on to the basics of self-care. These are the most important things that you can do, and I'm going to talk about them here because if you don't mention them, you might just assume that you're doing it well or doing it right, or that someone else who's important to you is doing this well. And if someone is important to you, then it is worth it for you to encourage them to be taking care of themselves. So let's talk about the basics, the most important basics. Let's start with sleep and rest. So important. So important to give your body a chance to recover from the stress of the day, 
from any ways in which you've taxed yourself, whether it's physically or mentally or emotionally or spiritually or energetically or genetically, however you have put yourself under stress, giving yourself time to actually recover is a huge component of being able to show up for yet another day. And if you ever want to scare yourself, then I suggest you read up on some of the experiments they've done about depriving people of sleep. It doesn't take very long for people to more or less lose their minds. So I do, those things are not for the faint of heart. So in fact, there are times when I wish that I hadn't read those studies. So if you don't want to traumatize yourself, then perhaps you just take my word for it and say, hey, sleep and rest is important. And so what that means is that you really need to pay attention to how your body is responding. If you are feeling exhausted all the time, it could just be that you're not getting enough sleep. Or maybe you're getting sleep, but you're not getting good enough sleep. So there are all kinds of ways that you can improve the quality of your sleep, um, and you can improve the how rested you feel after you've slept. Um, but the most important thing is just to get some sleep. And uh, I have this problem now in my life. This used to never be an issue for me, but I cannot really sleep past 5.30. I mean, sometimes I'll be lucky and I'll get to 6 or 6.30. And if I'm really lucky and I don't have anything to do, I might be able to eventually fall back to sleep and get some really cool dream sleep in the, in the, well, now I'd consider it late morning. I mean, man, if I could sleep till eight or nine, that would be great, but I can't. So the thing is, no matter how late I go to bed, that's when I'm waking up. And sometimes it's just required because of everything I have to do in the day. So to me, it's important to try to get to bed as close to 10 PM as I can. So I get at least a good seven and a half or eight hours of sleep. So for you, it's as simple as just looking at how much sleep are you getting is it enough? And what can you do to ensure that you get more if you need it? There are very few of us who are getting too much sleep. Um, but if you're one of those people, um, then yeah, you're going to have to learn how to maybe get a little less so you can get a little bit more done with your day. But for the most part, I encourage you to look at how well rested you are. And, and this includes uh, things like taking a quick cat nap during the day. There are all kinds of studies that show that having a 15 to 30 minute nap in the middle of the afternoon can be really helpful for staying energized throughout the rest of the day and for getting better sleep at night. There's something about forming a good sleep habit, I guess, too. So I think you've gotten the point at this point that rest is one of the fundamental elements for taking care of yourself. So the next thing, it goes without saying as well, and yet so many of us are not getting enough of this crucial element, which is water. And I'm I'm looking at my water glass that's not that far from me, and I'm realizing that I'm going to need to refill it really soon, probably right after I'm done talking to you. I'm going to refill my water glass. If you do not have enough water in your system, it will be challenging for you to think well. It will be challenging for you to relate well to other people. It puts your body in a state of stress and fear. So if it is really easy to get triggered, it could be that you are actually dehydrated and that you need more water in your body to increase your threshold for being able to handle other kinds of energy in your life without getting triggered. So try to drink a lot of water. And when you wake up, it's a good idea to drink a full glass of water just to like kick things off for your body with some good hydration for the day. But I encourage you to uh, follow the, the recommendations. You can actually go online and, and calculate according to like your age and your body weight how much water you should be drinking. Go do that. You know, Waste a few mindless minutes to find out exactly how much water you need and then take it seriously. Drink it and do that as an experiment for a week. 
drink as much water as you are supposed to be drinking. And apart from the fact that you're probably going to have to pee a lot more than you're used to peeing, I'm curious to see what else you notice about how well your mind works, how easily your body moves, and how much more easily you're able to show up for life. So, all right, we've covered rest and sleep. We've covered water. Now, the next element is probably not going to surprise you at all, and that's food. So I'm going to ask you, how well are you eating? How frequently are you eating? How much are you eating? Is it nutritious? Are they empty calories or are they vitamin-packed calories? Are you getting enough protein? Are you getting enough phytonutrients? These are all important things. That Are you eating the rainbow of colors? Or are you eating just a lot of, like my kids tend to eat, a lot of pasta and bread and not much else? And trust me, I try. I <laughs> really try with them. Smoothies are good. You, you can sneak a lot of good ingredients into a smoothie. Are you getting enough food? And I'm just going to admit here that this is one that's actually hard for me, which may not surprise you if you see me because I'm kind of a skinny dude. And part of that is because sometimes I skip a meal. Sometimes I'm just kind of eating uh, you know, as I get hungry, but I'm not eating full meals. I'm too busy. So this is a place where I really have my own challenges. And um, I've gotten better. I've gotten better so that at least I'm not getting hungry throughout the day because that would be big for me. I'd be like so um, focused on what I was doing that I'd just kind of lose track of the fact that I was actually hungry. And the thing is that when you're hungry, it's kind of like being dehydrated. That's another thing that will put your body into a state of, of fear and panic. Uh, you go into survival mode. And the thing is, if you're doing things that distract you from that, then your body can actually be in survival mode and you can be end up doing things that are really about trying to help your body feel better, where the only thing you really need to do is to actually eat a good meal. So at this point, I don't let, let myself get to that point, hardly ever. Um, but even so... I invite you to look at how your day is paced and scheduled and to see, like, could you be doing more without too much more effort to ensure that the meals that you get are nutritious and balanced and healthy for you and et cetera, et cetera. You get it. So we've covered rest, water, and food. I bet you can guess what's going to come next. Now, I do have a couple surprises for you in this list of essential self-care elements. But before I get to the surprises, I'm going to give you the, the next one that should be a no-brainer for you, and that is exercise. Yes, you should, as much as you can, move your body. We are not designed to be sedentary creatures. We're not designed to be in a car for hours on end. We're not going to designed to be sitting over a computer. And on the flip side, we're not even also we're also not necessarily designed to be working brutally hard for eight to ten hours a day. Like if you're doing physical stuff, that as well is not something that our bodies are necessarily designed to do. So you may need a little bit less exercise if you have physical work that you do. But even so, you might need to do things that help you stay more limber and flexible. Or maybe you need cardiovascular fitness so that you can dance for two hours every Sunday morning like I do without getting winded. It's important. It's important. And even just getting up and taking a walk and you probably know, I mean, this isn't an exercise podcast and it's not a eating right podcast and it's not a how to sleep podcast, but this is how to take care of yourself so that you can show up for your relationship podcast and getting some good exercise that's fun and that gets your heart rate going and allows you to move your body in new and novel ways. That is key to self-care. So at this point, we've covered the, the basic basics. And I have a, a couple more that maybe are going to surprise you. And on top of that, I also want to talk to you briefly about today's sponsors. 
Now, interestingly, I just had a review um, on Apple Podcasts. And just so you know, I do read all the reviews, just like how I read all the emails that come into me. I can't respond to them, and I, I, I can't respond to them all. And I certainly can't respond to the reviews, um, although I do read them. And I'm going to respond to one right now because someone wrote in and, and said something about the uh, the advertisers, the sponsors for the show. And I just want you to know that I do put a lot of care, at least I try to put a lot of care into who I select for the show, and I try to rule out ones that are obviously not going to align with you. And I try to pick ones that I think will be interesting for you or entertaining for you or more than anything useful for you that have special offers for you. So it's important to me. And also, um, you know, along those lines, a lot of people ask me when they ask me what I do and I say, oh, I'm a podcaster and I talk about relationships. I bet you can guess the first question that they ask me after that. It's not usually the second question is something about the relationship that they're in. And I'm usually happy to give some free advice. But the the first thing they always ask me is, how do you make a living doing that? How do you make a living podcasting? And it's a good question. I, I'm, I piece it together, honestly. And it, you know, it gets easier and easier over time. But um, one of the ways that I keep the lights on here, like I say, week after week is through the contributions of people like you. That's why every week I mention, hey, you can donate if you'd like to. It's really helpful for me. And a lot of work and effort goes into uh, being here with you every week to make sure that I'm offering you something really helpful and valuable. I put a lot of thought and care into it. And I know if you've been listening for a while that you get it. Um, hopefully you get it. Hopefully you feel that coming from me. Um, and another important piece of that is sponsors who want to also support the cause of Relationship Alive and also want to support you in having a great relationship. And they're helping support me and, and keep things going here. So I hope you can listen to them and get that I'm, I'm just trying to choose things that will be helpful for you. Um, and at the same time, they're also uh, contributing to the cause and, and helping ensure that I can do this, what I love to do every week, which is to show up and, and be with you. Um, so it's, a, it's an important component. Um, so with that being said, uh, our first sponsor today is a relatively new sponsor. Their name is Audible Escape. They're a monthly subscription that provides unlimited listening to thousands of love stories. That makes sense, right? Given what we're talking about. And let's face it, love stories, they have the ability when you're in a stressful moment or a hard moment or you're just trying to get some chores done, they can whisk you away no matter where you are or what you're doing. So your errands and chores, they can just fade into the background while you're listening to these stories, which can transport you into a realm of whatever emotional experience you're looking for. You can look for something hot and steamy. You can look for something sensual. You can look for something inspiring. They are all there on Audible Escape. You can listen to romantic comedy stories, or you can listen to something serious like uh, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. So you can join the Audible Escape community and listen for free to unlimited stories for the first month. You can just try them out for free for a month. And after that, it's just twelve ninety five a month or only six ninety five a month if you're already an Audible or a Kindle Unlimited member. So download the app to explore the love stories by visiting audible.com slash love alive to get started that's audible.com slash love alive all squished together our second sponsor for today has a special offer for you to help you get exactly the kind of support that you need as you're creating that web of support for yourself that we often talk about on the show and that can also be such a huge component of nurturing yourself and getting some self-care so one way that allows you to connect with a professional counselor in an online environment that's safe and private is today's sponsor, BetterHelp. With BetterHelp, you can get help on your own time and at your own pace. Along with scheduling video or phone sessions, you can also chat and text with your therapist. 
They're affordable and financial aid is available for those who qualify. So whether it's anxiety, depression, your relationship, stress, grief, dealing with trauma, or simply learning how to take better care of yourself, whatever it is, definitely consider BetterHelp as a way to help you transform the places where you are stuck. And best of all, it's a truly affordable option because as a Relationship Alive listener, you get 10% off your first month with the discount code ALIVE. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash alive and simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor that you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash alive. And I just want to thank you, BetterHelp and Audible Escape, for your support of loving, supported, steamy relationships uh, and for supporting the podcast, Relationship Alive. So now let us get back to our conversation about self-care. And I'm just going to reach over and grab my glass of water. I'm setting a good example for you. It's good stuff. Um, All right. So I told you that there are a couple surprise ways that are part of any essential self-care regimen. And then we're going to get a little creative after that. So the surprise elements. The first thing that came to mind for me, because I wanted to come up with things that were outside of that realm of necessarily direct care of yourself, were friends having connection with other people. And while it's helpful, I think, obviously, to connect with your partner, if you have a partner, I think it's also helpful for you to connect with people who are not your partner as a way of keeping your life interesting and also giving yourself an opportunity to receive care from other people who aren't your significant other. So... This has a couple uh, benefits to it. One is that it takes a little bit of the pressure off of your partner to be everything when it comes to supporting you. The second is that it can also set up some great reciprocity because along with getting support from your friends, there is nothing that can actually feed you more sometimes, not all the time, than supporting your friends. So having that give and take of friendship is also really important to feeling your humanity, feeling your capacity, feeling that you are actually capable of showing up in the world for people who are, who care about you and who are important to you. So if you don't have any friends, then maybe we'll do another episode about how to make friends because I think that is also important. But I do encourage you to try going to meetups or striking up conversations with random people or um, just paying attention because there are opportunities all over the place to interact with others. Maybe there are fewer and fewer of those opportunities now that people walk around with their smartphones or listening to podcasts as they walk down the street. Uh, It was so funny. I was sitting in a restaurant just the other day. And uh, it was a cafe. So typically this is the kind of place where 15 years ago I would go and everyone was there. And sure, maybe they were writing or reading a book, but people weren't talking on their phones. They definitely were not um, on their smartphones. Maybe they had a laptop. But I used to get into so many conversations at cafes. Now you go to a cafe and people are pretty much lost in their own world. However, that is not universally true. And when you see people who are not buried in a device of some sort, then it is an amazing opportunity to just say, hey, like, what do you think about the weather? Or, hey, I mean, there's all there's always something to comment on in your present moment to forge a connection with someone. You could even say, hey, I noticed you're not on a smartphone. Um, so I thought I'd just say hello because I was hoping that maybe that meant you were interested in connecting with another human instead of connecting with a device. I invite you to experiment with how you connect with other people, of course, in safe and respectful ways that honor other people's boundaries. You don't want to uh, violate anyone's consent. Um, 
So stick with saying nice pleasantries, <laughs> nice pleasantries as a way of opening the door to connection with another person. Um, but also connecting with your friends, and this could be around them literally supporting you around something that's going on in your life, or it could just be you know going for a walk together, or heading out in a canoe, or um, anything like that. Uh, but giving your friends an opportunity to show up for you is also a gift to them because most of our good friends, they want to know that they're able to give you what you need. And if you never ask anything of them, then it keeps the door shut to a more intimate connection with the people in your life. I'm not talking about a sexually intimate connection, but I'm talking about the kind of intimate connection that you can feel when you just feel that kind of love that I feel for my closest friends. And uh, and I, I'm actually a pretty, I try to be a pretty loving person. I strive to do that. I strive to love people as they are, for how they are. And hopefully that's another thing that you feel coming through in my voice as I talk to you every week. All right, the last thing that is also really important for adequate self-care kind of goes hand in hand with the friends thing. And that is practicing having boundaries. Now, I could do a whole episode on boundaries. In fact, I did do an episode on boundaries with uh, Sari Gilman. Um, and I'll tell you what episode number that was in a moment. But... Um, you know, that episode doesn't have to be, be the be all end all. Um, so I'll probably end up doing another. Um, but this isn't going to be the episode devoted to how to make boundaries. Um, by the way, that was episode number 40. Yes, I literally just looked it up while I was talking to you. Ep episode number 40 is called Transform Your Boundaries with Sari Gilman. Um, so what is important about boundaries is that they define what gets to enter your space. So it could be an energetic boundary that you're working with. It could be an emotional boundary. It could be a physical boundary. Whatever the boundary is, they are the things that keep other people out and other energies out. And they're also the things that help you keep your energy in. If all of your energy is going out and you're not making boundaries, for instance, by saying no, then again, you're not going to have anything left for um, the times when it counts the most. So boundaries are about saying no and preserving your own inner fire as much as they are about um, protecting yourself from uh, stray and errant, hostile energy or pernicious energy or just overly volatile or overly emotional or overly sad or overly whatever energy that's coming at you, I encourage you to pay attention, to pay attention to how the world around you is affecting you and notice, uh, know what your baseline is for one thing. Uh, so when no one is around and nothing is going on, what's your kind of resting state? And then notice how the world affects you. What does it do to just walk out your door? What does it do when you're in the grocery store? What does it do when that coworker at the office starts talking to you? Notice what's happening and then get into inquiry with yourself about how to create a boundary that wouldn't be unkind. Uh, I do believe in making boundaries in a kind way, kind to yourself and kind to other people. But it's a boundary nonetheless. So how can you make kind boundaries that do what they're intended to do. So that's the quick little primer on boundaries. So those six things, sleep, water, food, exercise, friends and connections, and boundaries, I think are essentially the most basic fundamentals of self-care that you can have. And there are things that I'm working on all the time, so I don't have this nailed by any means, but it's important, and I do notice that the more that I'm paying attention to it, the better I feel, in the, and the more uh, I get along with the people around me, the more I'm able to handle the stress of life, and the more I'm able to show up fully with joy in moments that are joyful and warrant extra joy. 
So I encourage you to take those six things seriously. And then there may be things that you want to add to that list. So there's this place where we get to be creative about self-care. So I want to ask you, uh, along with those things that I mentioned, you know, without which we more or less don't function, uh, what is essential for you? Maybe you have one or two or three things that when they're in your life, you feel well cared for. You feel nourished and nurtured. I invite you to take a moment and write a list of things that you know when you do them, they make you feel so good, so full, so cared for. And like if you were going to take care of a young child, how would you take care of yourself that way? So I invite you to to stop and, and pause the podcast for a moment and just write those things down or speak them out loud. And, um, and if you have more than two or three, if you have five, if you have 10, like don't, don't feel like you have to stop. It's great to have a long list to draw from so that when you have a moment where you're bored or frazzled or whatever it is, you can go to that list and be like, right, I can do something to take care of myself. And when I take a walk in nature, that feels like nurturing to me. Or when I draw a bath and sip some tea or when I play my guitar, whatever it is, know yourself in that way and prioritize those things. That's the next step. Once you know them, it's to actually make it a priority in your life to do those things. If you're like me and how I've felt uh, when I come upon a moment after a long uh, about of lack of self-care, about of not taking very good care of myself, this can be kind of an emotional experience to realize all the ways that you're not showing up for you, that you're not taking care of yourself. And maybe you even feel like there's not enough time, there's not enough energy, there, like there's no way that you can do it. But trust me, you can't not do it. And if you tell the people in your life that you really need a little bit of X, Y, Z in order to show up more fully for them, most of them are going to get it. And the ones who don't get it, hopefully you can have more conversations with them uh, using my communication guide, neilsatin.com slash relate, to, uh, to have that conversation and, and work it out so that you can take guilt-free moments to take care of yourself. Now, if you're coming up short in terms of ideas or you feel like the things that you've always relied on aren't really doing it for you anymore, then... I invite you to take another step, which is to poll your friends and ask them what they do to take care of themselves. You may get some really interesting, unique ideas that you wouldn't have even thought of, or maybe you wouldn't have thought that they would feel like nurturing, but it, it adds new ideas to the fire so that you can try them out and see what works for you. And in fact, I think I'm going to start a thread in the uh, Relationship Live community on Facebook and just see um, what other kinds of things people do for self-care. Okay, I think that's enough for today. If you have self-care, uh, if you want to contribute to the self-care conversation, you can show up on Facebook and do that, or you can always email me, neilius, N-E-I-L-I-U-S, at neilsatin.com. I'm going to be doing episodes with your questions. So if you have a specific question for me, I invite you to record yourself asking the question and email it to questions at relationshipalive.com. And finally, uh, I really do hope that I get to see you on October 12th for Relationship Alive Live here in Portland, Maine with the Gottmans. Visit neilsatin.com slash live show for more info on that. Okay. Take care. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week where I think we're going to have an episode about how to use conflict to serve you, to serve your growth. It's going to be an invaluable primer on the value of conflict. So stay tuned for that next week. And in the meantime, take care and 
I'll see you soon. <laughs>